Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm missing the glasses. I, I still love those. I, I want those glasses. <laughs> Fantastic. I love seeing all these horn players here. Hey, Adelaide, Adam, Loksh, Max, good to see you this morning. Sibby, what's up? Suhas, there's young Preston, young Allie. Argus, um, Eric, Argus got into B-U-T-I. Oh. Uh, and of course, is unable to attend, but uh, yeah, he would have been there this summer. Oh, what a shame. Well, good. I'm, I, hopefully, I'll get to hear him today. You will hear him today, yes. Um, anyways, um, can you all help me welcome Eric Rusk? I, uh, I'm a little shocked that we made it happen, but we, we're here. So, um, first and foremost, we just want to all thank you for your time. I know it's, it's a lot to, uh, you know, be on a Zoom call and all that. So thank you, first and foremost, for your time. No problem. Um, this series has been 14 people long, and we started with Bill Vermeulen, and we're ending uh, with you, and we had everyone in between. Um, will you just take a second and tell us a little bit about, because, you know, I, I know a little more about you than these kids do. Would you just tell us a little bit about where you're from and uh, where you were born? Okay. where you went to college and who you studied with? Okay, so um, basically what what I have, I mean, um, you know, this, this class is today is for you guys. I mean, I don't, you know, whatever I have to say, you've already had 14 people talking for a while, and whatever I have to say is just my opinion. It holds no weight. It's not, it's not more important or less important than anybody else. It's just my opinion. It just doesn't matter at all. I mean, you know, you've already had 14 people telling you, and you've got a great teacher. You've got a great teacher. You've got, you know, um, or teacher, teachers, plural, whatever. I mean, my, my job is just to share my experience with you. It's like, you know, as I tell my students, you know, you hear something that works for you, use it. If you don't, then just discard everything that, that doesn't. Um, hopefully, you know, at, at some point, if you have questions about anything, um, I'm 57. I, um, I played in an orchestra for a while. I played in the Cleveland Orchestra for a few years. I played in a brass quintet for a number of years. And, um, and I teach. I teach at Boston University. And, um, you know, I've, I've had the privilege of being able to play horn my entire professional life. So I've done pretty much, um, I've done the, ga I've run the gamut. So um, if there's anything, any questions, again, I don't have answers. I just have my experience. So um, and I it, love that. Mark, well, one yeah, of one of the things I know about you is that uh, you are a diligent practicer and you get up at 57 every day. I think Dave told me you get up at six and uh, you just get after it every morning. Will you share with us what you do first and how you start your day each day on the horn? Yeah. I mean, I look, I don't, I'm, there are lots of people and everyone has an opinion about how to practice and what to do and what works for them. And for me, what works for me is I practice every morning. I mean, you know, a lot of people complain, uh, I'll make a disclaimer now for my language. I'm sure it'll get colorful and there are young kids, which is why I don't <laughs> teach young kids. <laughs> Whatever. It's not my fucking problem. <laughs> I practice hard. I practice a lot. I practice, um, I usually, get, you know, when I've got to come over to your school, I get up at five. During the summer, I get up at six. If I've got a flight at six, I get up at 1.30. And I practice. And I do this. I When I was, uh, I went to school, I went to Northwestern. I studied with uh, Mr. Clevenger. And um, he, I can remember him telling me that um, he, he said that he did this um, Joseph Singer heavy routine in the back of this book. And he said, um, it's what I did. You can do it. You can not do it. I don't really care. He said, you know, it worked for me. And I was like, uh, he said, and I won't tell you again. I was like, okay. Because I asked him some stupid question about like, what do you do for a warm up?" And, you know, there are any number of different warm ups that work. The, the, for me, I like it because it covers all the bases, high, low, tongued, you know, long tones. I really, I'm all about efficiency. I want to spend as little time messing around because I've got other shit I've got to do. I'm not interested in like just puddling, you know, you know, if I'm going to get, if I'm going to go to the ocean, then I want to swim. I don't want to stand there and I just put my foot in the water, right? So the same thing goes with practicing. I, I practice first thing in the morning, every morning. I get out of bed and I start practicing. 
every day, 365 days a year. During the summer, I come over, I'm over here at school now and I go up on the roof and practice. So after I get done teaching you guys um, or, you know, doing this class, I go up, put on a pair of shorts and then I'll go up on the roof and practice out in the sunshine. You guys are in hmm. Texas, right? Yes, sir. At that point, I mean, you're, I mean, I mean, it's already summer there. Where it's are you gorgeous here, actually, in, in DFW. It is, it is beautiful today. It's great, great outdoor practice day. Wait, my sister, my sister just, um, I have a niece who has um, a new baby who lives in Arlington. Okay. And um, my sister just moved to um, just north of Dallas, and I have a nephew. Almost um, all, of my, um, well, all of my relatives who are alive live in Dallas now. Wonderful. Most of these kids go to school in Frisco ISD, uh, which is north of Dallas. Maybe your sister is in Plano or Richardson or Frisco. Let me see. Hold on a second. I'm it gonna says I'll text her right now. Um, let's see. Hold on a second. I have, um, let's see, the ad Argyle. Argyle. Okay. So it's like, that's one of these little like mid cities, like kind of a little city in a big city. It's some tiny little town in the middle of nowhere. Right. Because, you know, whatever. So they just moved out there a year ago and they were, um, so, you know, they're already, you know, she wanted to be near her granddaughter. In any case, look, the fact is, is that, you know, and like during this, as I told my students, for those of you who were saying, oh, well, it's a quarantine and I can't practice, blah, blah, blah. It's horseshit. I mean, you get a practice mute, you put it in, you, you know, I mean, this is like, you know, there is no, I mean, I practice at home with a practice mute every day. I live in an apartment in Boston. Nobody in my apartment building wants to hear me practicing long tones at five in the morning, right? <laughs> you take a practice mute, you put it in. And I mean, you know, it's funny. This is me, but I mean, a lot of musicians tend to think that if they work four hours a day, that's like a really big day, right? I mean, and the fact is, is that any guy who works in the trades, electrician, plumber, uh, you know, carpenter, I mean, they're putting in, Nine, ten. If you work in, a, if you work as a an Uber driver, you're driving twelve hour shifts, six days a week. I mean, you know, I don't really understand the, you know, the disconnect of like, you know, oh, I've, I've, you know, I, I can't, I can't barf out three, you know, three hours, an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon, an hour at night. Anyway. Hey, I, I love that. I love the uh, no excuses attitude and. You, for some of these students who have had a lot of success during quarantine, I think they're really feeling that like, oh, I put the excuses away and wow, look at what I'm capable of. Right, right. And you know, this is the thing. It's like, if, uh, and this is what I told my students when they let, you know, when, when BU shut down and they sent all the kids back at, you know, I mean, no, no kids came back after spring break in early March. And I, and I told them, you know, we continue to do the Zoom classes. And I said, you got to remember that some kid is is thinking to himself, okay, I've got all this time now. I can use it to practice. I can use it to look at scores. I can listen to recordings. I can start learning repertoire. I can learn my German terms. I can, you know, find, you know, and some kid is making it work. And all the kids who aren't, who cares? You don't you yeah. have to worry about them. Oh, man, I love it. I also really appreciate you saying that you do what works for you as a warm up, and that you're comfortable again just stealing from things that you like and that work for you and to not overcomplicate. Right, right. Really appreciate that. So I know, I know, uh, you know, obviously we're gonna, we're gonna get to the kids, but one of the things that I think is so incredible about what you've done for us as horn players is you've extended the repertoire um, by approaching violin and flute music. Will you talk about, first of all, why you do that? And second of all, how do you go about sorting those pieces out and, and getting them to work on the horn? Okay, so, I mean, this was a long process for me. And I got, I really got, um... <laughs> Hey, Dave. How you doing? Sorry. Hey, B. <laughs> You're in the car driving. Stop. No, I'm not gonna stop. I'm like, I'm like going over the Rocky Mountains, man. Can I? Is this? Have we started? Is there? Are there kids here? No. There are kids here. We have started. 
<laughs> okay, let me put my clothes back on. <laughs> Sorry. I love you, man. Hey, this is Coleo. Hey. Have a date? Dan Jaber. Wow. All the all the pros showing up. Eric Rex. Have you have you guys started your 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 interview? Have you guys yes. done any questions? Yes. All we did was talk about you. I knew it. I knew it. I, so my ears are hurting. Like I feel hot all over. <laughs> look at this. Look at, look at the Rocky Mountains, guys. I'm just going over the Rocky Mountains here. This is this is it. Oh, that's so gorgeous. Hey, how's the trip going? Yep. Oh, it's it's fantastic, man. Oh, I'm so glad. I mean, it's just like from my life. Oh, so who's the date you picked up? Just you know, it's this Bulgarian. He was hitchhiking. He's he's a, a whole player. And uh, yeah, we we were like back to back, like a uh, arch nemesis on these like auditions on the audition circuit in 2000, you know, 10, 11. And then he kicked my ass a bunch of times, and so I had to go practice. Nice. Yeah. For the students uh, who won't know, that's that's Colio Plachkov of the Colorado Symphony joining us. Dave Cooper, of course, from Chicago. Many uh, middle school kids here that are just you know we're still learning our our industry and people that are in it. Can, can you hold the phone? Absolutely. Yeah. So Colio's just gonna hold the phone while I drive. I gotta mute you, buddy. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. But you know, look, e even though we, we, we went to the side here, this is what these classes are all about is just connecting us all and letting us all realize that it's a bunch of people doing the same thing. Absolutely. And you know, I mean, look, I mean, this is, oh, oh, <laughs> I love this. This is the best ever. What a way to start my Friday morning. Well, my best, yes. whatever. Um, yeah. And you know, look, this is the, you know, the, the thing is, is, as you look at Ben Jaber, as you look at all the guys that are sitting here, except, you know, except for me, who's now at this point so old. Oh, I'm going to go back and answer the question. Okay. So, you know, Mark had asked me about something about doing arrangements. And this is, you know, you look at, the, you, you know, everyone else except for me, this is the new generation of like success. This is like, these are the guys that you're supposed to be listening to. And what they're doing is, they're giving you new repertoire. So for a lot of the young kids, you, I mean, your first job is to learn all of your standard repertoire. You're supposed to learn your Mozart concerto. You're supposed to learn your Strauss concerto, you know, Glier. You're supposed to learn your basic, you know, orchestral repertoire. But as you go along, I mean, what, what you'll find is, is that when you get to their level, when you get to the level of these players, it becomes, I mean, you play. I mean, you get a little bit bored if you've played it, you know, for 30 years, right? <laughs> so, you know, you start looking for other stuff. And I, I used to play in this brass quintet, and I got in the brass quintet, and they never played brass quintet music. All they did was steal other music, mostly because they didn't want to pay royalties to anybody else, but also because it was, they wanted to have their own music. And so what we learned is, is that any, you can steal from anybody. Yeah, you can go into Home Depot and you can literally steal anything you want. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, but the fact is, is that you can, you know, at your, at the younger kids age, you can go in and you can start taking songs. You can take, um, you can look at any music that you sing in a chorus. You can pick up, you know, a, a nice melody. Uh, and you'll be like, oh, I didn't realize you could play that on horn. You can play anything on horn. And then when you get to the rock star status of, of, the, of, of these gentlemen, oh, oh, look, all the gentlemen have beards except for that guy driving. Yeah. <laughs> his, his hasn't grown in yet. He's still working on it. Beard yet. <laughs> Uh, puberty will arrive eventually, my friend. Someday, someday. <laughs> I think Locke Schulati has a thicker beard than Dave Cooper, and he's like 15. <laughs> yeah.
yeah, well, you know, it's, you know, little, little by slowly. Yeah. So, I mean, but the fact is, is that, you know, as you start going along and then you start listening to other, re other repertoire and there, it, for me, it's twofold. You listen to a violinist play something and you start, you know, for those of you who have been listening to, um, you know, um, uh, Mr. Cooper's been putting these, I don't know, these Instagram things. Um, I'm sure a lot of the kids listened to that recital that he played. Oh yeah. I didn't. Anyway, I was busy. I, I was busy torturing my own child. So, you know, I, he got to play with himself. So in any case, <laughs> but the fact is, is as you listen to that music that he's playing, whether it's for violin alone, whether it's for flute alone, whether it's, I mean, whether it's music that's written for horn alone, obviously we learn that also, but there's just an inexhaustible amount of music. That's great music. I mean, you know, you start playing. I mean, you know, it's nice. I mean, it, it's a nice piece. You know, it's a solo horn piece. But then when you start talking about Baroque, I mean, whether it's Bach, unaccompanied flute sonatas, um, you know, these Telemann violins and us, whatever it is. It, it's like a, it's a new, it's a brand new world. And it's, you know, both technique wise, musically, it just makes practicing fun. I mean, if I had to literally think about, you know, practicing, I mean, just horn music, you know, every day, all day, I would, I would kill myself. That sounds a little, that sounds a little boring. Yeah. Right. But, uh, but again, you know, to the kids, a lot of these kids are younger. I um, mean, you know, and I mean, the first job, first things first. And that's, you know, that's to learn, you know, start with, you know, the, the bottom of the pyramid. What is the stuff that you're going to play all the time? Don't start off trying to, you know, I mean, the John Williams concerto is there. But if you don't know, if you can't play, you know, Mozart 4 and Strauss 1, then, you know, mind your, you know, mind your business, right? Take first things first. First things first. I love that, man. Ab absolutely. The, when... <laughs> Most of uh, most of my students know you for those Mozart recordings. Uh, um, will you tell us a little bit about recording that and just? I mean, it's. I to to I shared this with you, but you know, it was the first classical music CD I ever owned, and my mom's colleague DC Choi from Samsung gave it to me for my birthday. He said, "Hey, here's this CD. You should listen to this guy. You play the horn." And man, I mean. It was off and running from there. So can you tell us about doing that with Macarus and the Scottish Chamber Orchestra? Um, you know, it's funny. I mean, it was, a, it was a different period in my life and I'll leave some of the colorful bits out. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> but <laughs> it was amazing. Okay, so I went there and I was, I, um, I mean, I knew I was in over my head. First of all, because at this time in my life, I was not, I mean, the whole like, preparation and follow through thing was really uh yeah it was sketchy to say the work in progress at that point oh, -hoo -hoo! <laughs> went out there and and you know but and i got i was getting ready to go and it was like a few days before and i hadn't done the i hadn't written the cadenzas yet and it was just time was getting closer and closer and i just kept pretending like you know i was like oh i mean i lived in denial anyway right so this is what i tell my students is that you know, you're going to go play these concerti and the moment that everyone stops, the conductor stops, the orchestra stops, the hall is dead quiet. The only time that really counts is that cadenza. So that should be the first thing you learn, not like the last thing you learn, which is what I did. Right. Yeah. So do as I say, not as I do. Right. But in any case, I went over, I, you know, I went over to this, um, the and I can remember meeting with this guy. I mean, Sir Charles McCarris was like, I mean, at this point in his life, he was a, you know, he was, you know, he's a giant. He was a musical giant. And um, I can remember, you know, playing some stuff for him. You know, it was our first, it was a blind date. So I, you know, I was playing some stuff for him in the, um, you know, um, in, in his, in his room. And um, he was like, yeah, no. I was, I was like, w wait, what? He's like, yeah, no, no. Listen to that. Listen to those articulations. Listen to those note lengths. Listen to these tempos. He said, yeah, that's and and it was, but it was all he, even fewer words than that. 
So one of his big things was like, right? Always coming, you know, always coming away from second notes. Right? So it was always, there was a whole bunch of stuff that I had to kind of rework and fine tune and change the day before we started. And it was, I mean, you know, as all of the guys, I mean, uh, all, uh, I mean, for the, for the younger students, I mean, you're sitting in front of, I mean, you were just talking, Mark was just talking about before the class, talking about recording all those Glier, um, Galet etudes. So for the younger kids, you've recorded some stuff for, um, uh, for, mu um, for music competitions or, or auditions, BUTI. Well, you know, this quarantine, they've learned a lot about recording. That's why I asked the question, because they've been recording their auditions. They've been recording weekly assignments and submitting them. So they're really starting to understand how brutal it can be. That's a, it, it's not how brutal it can be, how brutal it is. I mean, it's like, you know, there's no, every time you go to record something, yes, you can play it a thousand times, that's the great, that's the good news. The bad news is it has to be perfect. I mean, at the end, it has to be right. I mean, it's not like, yeah, I can do it a thousand times, but you know, at the end, I mean, the 995th time, my chops aren't feeling so good. And I don't sound so, I'm not playing so well. And all of a sudden it's like, well, I can keep playing forever, but it's just getting worse. <laughs> I mean, if, if, you know, if we practice, if I, not we, if I practice with that kind of intention, then when then when the light goes on, when when you're recording something, then I can be like, okay, I've been practicing with that mindset. And so, and again, you know, all these kids, you know, they're all going to record stuff. I mean, they're just at the beginning of this process. I mean, for me, no. But I mean, but having said that, you know, we're all, you know. We're all students. I'm just the oldest one here by about 50 years. Well, and in what you said, I, I think it's, it's really important that you took a bunch of advice from Sir Charles moments before you played, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it was very nerve wracking because he was not, he was, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> discussion. It wasn't like you share your thoughts, I'll share mine, and then we'll, you know, and then we'll do it like, and then we'll figure out something. No, and I mean, I love that. I, you know, I, and so it was, it was real. Um, I mean, I was so lucky. I was really in over my head, and I, I certainly, um, 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 I'm, I'm really grateful for the experience, and uh, that, that's it. Turned out great. It's a, you know, that. I think, man, I, again, I really appreciate your candor. Like, I, it means a lot for me to hear you say that you were felt in over your head and that you felt underprepared. And like, you know, that makes me go, go oh, okay, it's, <laughs> that's not so rare. I'm always underprepared and I'm always in over my head. And you know, every, Good. No, no matter what piece I'm playing, it's always, I mean, the music is always better than I am. Mm. I mean, it's not, I mean, I'm not, there's never a point where I'm like, you know, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the best child on the stage. Yeah, no, never. Wow. So the last, before we start to hear some young horn playing, um, I always like to ask, um, especially folks like you that have a professorship and teach a lot, what are some of the ideas that are like paramount to your students? What do you always make a point to really drive into them? Um, that if they don't play well, I hit them. Oh yeah, the Chinese school. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, that no means no. Yes means yes, and no means no. I mean, this is like simple stuff. I mean, I tell my kids the most, the, the biggest thing that I have to offer my kids is that when I, they start at the beginning of the year, I tell them, I don't have a problem failing you. So, I mean, if you have a scholarship, if you're planning on graduating, you better work. Because if you don't, I give Fs. I give Fs, I give Ds. I don't, I mean, and, and the fact is, is it's like, I mean, working hard, it's an inside job. I mean, nobody, it, what I say is so much less important than what they do, right? You know, I, mean, I don't have anything to offer. So when the, when the students come, I tell them that 
my expectation is that you work hard. I mean, you pay an awful lot of money. I mean, to do what? Spend an hour with me? I mean, who gives a shit? <laughs> I mean, it's just not, I mean, it's just not, you know, but if you come here, I mean, if a student comes and it doesn't, whether it's here, whether it's in Dallas, whether it's in Chicago, whether it's in, you know, Bulgaria, I don't really care where it is. I mean, I don't care what, <laughs> I don't care where they're practicing. Whether you're San Diego, I don't, I mean, it doesn't matter where the kid is practicing. It's just that they are. Right. So, I mean, you know, I, I think the, um, the thing that I've learned as a, as a teacher or as a parent is that I, I'm not interested in whether my students like me or my children. I don't want them to like me. That's not my job. My job is to make them better. Right. And so, and being unpopular, ooh, is something I really, I, I'm really starting to love. <laughs> I have no problems being unpopular. <laughs> and, and for that, you know, at the end of four years, when you get a bachelor's, when you get a master's, when you get a doctorate, and you've worked hard. And I can remember, I had the first woman that got her doctorate from BU. I love her. Great woman. Great woman. She was, um, she had, they have to give five recitals. And on the fifth recital, she was giving, it was her lecture recital. And she was almost done. She'd passed all of her exams. It was her lecture demo recital on the Gliere Concerto. And she was about eight months pregnant. I mean, she was, I mean, it was, it was, I mean, she was huge. She was huge. And she gave this lecture recital and, um, I mean, she was obviously uncomfortable. She had to play the horn. She had to, you know, she had to talk. She was, you know, and she was getting ready to have a baby. And I, she finished the recital and I said, you know, that's really great, but you failed because it wasn't, it wasn't adequate. And, and of course she was really upset and her, you know, her husband and I adore both of them. And I said, you know, look, I love you. You're great. You know, you're terrific. You know that I really care about you, but that's, that doesn't pass. So you have to do it again. So of course, you know, she was, and she did it again. She did it again a week later. She got it in under the deadline. <laughs> wow. Yeah. She wasn't, you know, she wasn't like in the delivery room giving the lecture, right? But she had to do it again. And I told her at the back end of it, I said, don't you feel, don't you feel now that you've earned it? You've earned it. As opposed to me saying, oh, it's okay, you are pregnant, you get special dispensation because, you know, you weigh, you know, 695 pounds, you know, whatever. Yeah, no, no. Because when you go, when you're playing in, a, uh, when you're playing in an orchestra, right, when you're playing in an orchestra, nobody cares. You know, if you've got food poisoning, nobody cares if you're, I mean, if, you're, if your dad just died, nobody cares if you got in a car accident. There are no excuses, right? So, and there are no excuses at, at my age, and there are no excuses at age seven, right? It is a brutal, brutal industry, not unlike professional athletics in that the excuses are very few and the the expectation for perfection is very very high yeah but i i i you know the only thing i and i agree with you except that you know it's not brutal i mean you know the fact is is that it's just that Choice. people have gotten so used to like well, you know giving excuses you know i had to rip my kid a new one because she, she i she had some homework she had to turn in two days ago and she said i'll turn it in tomorrow and she didn't and I said, yes means yes, no means no. And, you know, of course, there were a lot of tears and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I don't care. That's not, I just don't care. Right. And, you know, so I can remember when I got in the orchestra and the personnel manager, oh, great guy. Oh, he had the, he had the numbers tattooed on the, on the inside of his arm. He was a, you know, he was in a. Is he a survivor? Yeah. Wow. Well, is it, is it, is it Zal Zalbert or like the trumpet guy? Trumpet. Zouder. Yeah. Yes. Zouder. Yeah. Maybe. And he, he was the 
second trumpet player and the personnel manager when I was in the orchestra. And, and he said to me when I, you know, I loved him. He was like all, he was very few words and all of them had meaning. And he said to me, you know what? I'll never, you'll never be, you'll never be late. You'll never be missing. I'll never wonder why you're not at a rehearsal or at a concert. And I was like, okay. He said, because if you're not here, you're in the hospital and you're, you're too, I mean, you, you've been in an accident that's so bad that you can't pick up the phone. And I was like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and then, you know, he went to go, you know, talk about, you know, you know, whatever. It's okay. Okay. Let's get, here's some kids. Okay. Wait, wait, um, Eric, wait, 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 wait. That's, uh, that's Ryan Anthony's teacher. Is that, is that Albert? Yeah, and that's why Ryan never misses anything, even when he's got chemo and he's got cancer. That's and yeah. and, and I can remember I, I remember going into David's office and I remember saying to him, I said, you know, he's a personnel manager and in a big orchestra there are all kinds of people that complain about all kinds of stuff that just stupid shit. Oh, the bus is late, my room isn't big enough, you know, what time is breakfast? Oh blah 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 blah. And I went into him one time and I said, How do you how do you listen to this? And he rolled up his arm and he showed me the number. He says, you know, it just doesn't matter. And I was like, oh, oh. And it's so to remediate a little bit of that for some of the young ones, Ryan Anthony is our principal trumpet in the Dallas Symphony and he has cancer and he's an incredible warrior who still shows up for work every single day. Um, and when we say that they're a survivor and we talk about the numbers on their arm, these are someone who survived the Holocaust um, in Germany, in World War II. And again, it's, uh, I think Not that, that is a no excuses existence right there. I mean, yeah, he was in a, um, you know, he was, he was in a concentration camp. He was, you know, in, I mean, I mean, he lived through it. He just didn't, he wasn't alive during World War II. He was in a Nazi, um, you know, prisoner you know prisoner camp right so right anyway on with very the uh very <laughs> i mean again i think that, that these things are so important to share because it's the experience of those who have come before us that helps us navigate our own lives and while these things might not be the most comfortable topics to talk about they are life and this is music and most great music is not about daisies and sunshine and happiness and, you know, I mean, look, all the, how old is the youngest kid we've got here? Seven? Probably sixth grade. So, like, 12. 12? My kid is in sixth grade. How old is she? 11 or 12? Right. And, you know, we have, I mean, these kids are old enough to know. I mean, though, I hate, I hate, you know, when people talk down to little kids. I mean, you know, and they're all little. Well, they're probably, most of them in Texas, they're probably all bigger than I am, right? So, in any <laughs> It's true. I don't know. The kids grow taller there. I don't know what it is. It's the water. Yeah, it's the water. I don't know. Probably kind of radiation, something that's making. Uh, but, you know, I mean, the fact is, is that you gain, it, whether it's an athlete, whether it's the guy who works at 7-Eleven, who's working 12 hours a day, whether it's the single mother who's got three jobs and is trying to raise, you know, two kids, whether it's, you know, I mean, the, the examples of people who work hard, are all around us, right? So, I mean, when kids complain, when my kid, when my children complain, when my students complain, I mean, I, I have absolutely no, think about Ryan Anthony. I mean, you think about, I mean, does he really want to take the trumpet out of his case and go play Mahler 5? Probably not. You know, does he really feel like it? But the fact is, is when he gets up in the morning, is he happy to be alive? Oh! Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he wakes up and he's like, holy shit, I woke up again. <laughs> That's it. It's like, you know, how, how happy are you to be, you know, above ground? And, you know, and I, I, I mean, you know, I'm an alcoholic, right? I take my daughter to meetings all the time and I, and she knows a bunch of junkies. She knows a bunch of junkies. And I'm like, you know, look, you know, you got two choices. I mean, in this life, you're either above ground or you're below ground. 
What you choose to do with that day that you've got, that's up to you. That's completely up to you. So, I mean, whatever. <laughs> well, I think that it's not a whatever though, man. Like that, that is a very uh, important thing for those kids to hear. And, you know, part of my mission is to not talk down to little kids. I, I talk all the time, you know, we give these kids the sharp tools and we let them run with them. Cool. And guess what? They're better at their age than I was at their age and probably than many of the professionals here. I mean, there are kids doing stuff at a very young age that is pretty scary. And that's because they weren't coddled. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, I mean, you're your own teachers. I mean, every one of these kids spends maybe what, an hour or two with you a week? 30 minutes to an hour. 30 minutes to an hour a week. And the rest of the time, they're teaching themselves. Every single person in the screen, on the screen, is their own teacher, right? And the fact is, is that what you do as your teacher, I mean, you can be a really nice, gentle teacher and say, oh, that's okay. You don't have to stand up. You don't have to memorize. You don't have to, you know, you can play the same etude again. You don't have to play with dynamics. Or you can be the teacher that says, wow, that sucked. You better, you better work. <laughs> I'm bad. <laughs> well, okay. Um, let's uh, take a second. If there's any questions before we start playing, can students put those in the chat bar if you want to know something specific? Eric, can I ask a question? What do you, what do you listen to? Like, what music are you listening to that inspires you? What kind of... To what kind of music do I listen? Um, you know, <clears throat> uh, you know. Again, can you hear me? Yes, I can. You asked me. Um, to what music do I listen? Yes. I don't. Um. Ah! <laughs> do you hear that dangling breath solution there, Mr. Cooper? Ah, <laughs> oh, you love me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, you know, this is, again, the thing. So, you know, these, for the, you know, for the younger kids, I mean, they have to know that. Right? I mean, that that's Tchaikovsky 5. They have to know, I mean, they have to learn all of their basic repertoire. I mean, they have to know what, you know, all of, not excerpts. They have to know what these pieces sound like. So, I mean, there's what, there's what I listen to, and then there's what, and then there's what, you know, the advice that I give to, to younger students. And back, you know, in the same way with repertoire, my suggestion is that you get a, you know, a really firm, well-educated foundation of standard, basic orchestral repertoire that you're gonna play for the rest of your lives, your Beethoven symphonies, your Brahms symphonies, your Tchaikovsky symphonies, your Mahler symphonies, your Strauss tone poems. There's so much music to learn that, and not the excerpts. Now, some of you are maybe, you know, 12 years old and it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, you're not gonna learn it all now, but find a piece, find a piece that's, that you can kind of play that's not too difficult and start listening to it with a score. Get used to reading with a score. Now, when you get to the, you know, to the to the age of the of the older children, myself included, <laughs> now at this point, now you can start now you can start adding to it. Now you can start saying, "Oh, I want to listen to late Beethoven quartets, Opus 131. Now I want to listen to Bach sonatas and partitas." Um, you know, now I want to start listening to the six Bartok string quartets. I mean, and now I start going through this with a score. And now again, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a rank beginner. I'm, I, all I am is I'm, I'm just a, I'm a really poorly educated music student, right? I know a lot of the, the basic repertoire that we play in orchestras, but there's so much beyond that. All of my Beethoven violin sonatas. I mean, I mean, all of that stuff. 
and that's that's kind of where I mean that's what's on my I mean that's what I listen to when I'm when I have time to you know listen to other stuff. Does that does that satisfy you, Mr. Cooper? Was that an adequate? So take? no pop music. You you didn't you didn't say Ariana Grande. Hey, Metallica. Ah! I, was, I was I was hoping I was hoping for Metallica, but Gun I'll, I'll sit away. Would you would you like share, would you like me to share the um, the Mr. Brownstone? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, and you know the you know the fact is is that this in the same way. I mean, you know, a kid doesn't have to listen to classical music all the time, but for, yeah, 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 you can listen to pop music after you take care of business. You can you can play. You can, you know, you can mess around on the horn after you've done your heavy lifting. You know, you can have dessert after you've eaten dinner. It's the same basic concept, right? And then when I, then when I go to bed at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, I took care of business and, you know, I did what I was supposed to do. Today was a good day. I got, you know, this much better. I love it. I mean, I, I, I feel the same way. I don't feel like me unless I've uh, gone through the horn pretty extensively each and every day. Right. Um, I, I, Arden, Dave, let's hear it. What? Okay. Well, how do you get through tough times? Like what? I mean, like, does the horn come into that? Do you go to the horn as a, a way of solace when you're like struggling? Like, cause I know for me, when I've had really tough times, I pick up the horn, I feel better. Um, yeah. I, um, you know, it's funny. It's, you know, I was, I was, when we were, you and I were talking, when you and I were talking, you remember that Mr. Cooper? Remember we, we spent some time together on the, uh, on that, on your, one of your little fireside chat, yeah. the fire. Yeah. yeah. There was no fire. Yeah. I was such like, I was so disappointed. There was no fire. It was like woefully. <laughs> there, there, switch. There's fire between us. Yeah. Oh. There's, there's fire between us. <laughs> You know, and, and we were talking about like what, you know, happens. You know, how, you know, how do you get through those times? How do you get through the, uh, you know, through the, you know, the rough patches? And and more importantly, you know, what is it? What is you know? I, and we were talking about like you know the, the the horn that I play is made for me by this guy, and and I was saying that the relationship I have with this man, because I've literally played his instrument every day since I was I don't know I first one I got was eighteen. Tomorrow will be 57. So, I mean, like 40 years, right? Right? And so there's there's a certain, the solace comes with like um, knowing, um, like that, knowing that I'm going to practice every day, whether or not I actually want to, right? Doing the next right thing, right? Whether I want to or not is not really, is really kind of irrelevant. And what makes me feel better is a knowing that this too shall pass. You know, no matter how tough some some time is, it's like no matter how badly I'm playing on a day, I come back to it a few hours later. It's going to be different. No matter how bad I play some, how poorly I play some concert, the next one's going to be different. Likewise, when I play really well, if that ever happens, right? So, but I mean, you know, the, the you know the fact is is that when 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 times are tough this i mean that kind of when i'm feeling really angry and i'm like ah right i mean it's a it's a great it's a it, you know literally the horn can take it can take every emotion that i'm feeling and you can funnel it through so you know that that comment ooh, i like it am i on your windshield now I, I pulled over. <laughs> Some days through the windshield. I, I, I was I was getting me. <laughs> I was getting bad reception, and I wanted to hear your answer. I felt like it was weird to ask a question and not listen. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you're listening or. <laughs> you're done now. We can't hear you. <laughs> I'm listening. Yeah, but you look so cute, both of you. Okay, 
Good. Good. These are all wonderful things. Um, I'm really excited that we got to see Dave and Colio. People don't know. I, I, I know Colio quite well. He, he actually helped me really uh, figure some stuff out at a really tough time in my playing. Um, some of the things I learned from Colio on a trip to Colorado have stuck with me to this day. I, I work some of the stuff that he taught me every single day. Really, really helpful stuff. Um, Argus, open your camera up, big buck. Let's, uh, let's, let's hear you play something. Awesome. Hey, Mr. Russ. Hi, All right, I'm going to get out of here and let y'all hang out. Sweet. Uh, yeah, so I'll be doing the Mozart Horn Concerto number two expo. Okay. Are you standing up? Can do that too. That was the right answer. Busted. Nice hair. Did you get a haircut recently? Yes, sir. My mom actually owns a salon, like back where she used to live, so she well, knows how to cut hair. Look at that. Yeah, the yeah. Is, uh, you know, you know, you you've weathered the quarantine well, my friend. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Go play. Awesome. <laughs> Bravo. Oh, keep going. Okay. No, 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 no. Leave the music closed. second moment please uh, I actually have only got the first movement on me on this one okay give me a little bit of the second moment please uh, okay 
The second movement of this concerto? I actually haven't like done that one, that part of it yet. Do you, do you have the music in front of you? I only have the first movement with me. Got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ah, excellent, my friend. Okay. So let's, um, first of all, lovely playing. How old are you? I'm um, 17. And what would you like to do with the horn? Where is it? What would you? Um, I'm really interested in going into the professionality of it, just the music, musical interest industry. Um, like, I don't know, just a professional orchestra would be really cool. I, I love, I just love how the horn is, the sound. That's a lot of words that, uh, stop, stop talking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to be a professional? Yes, sir. Okay, that's it. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. okay. What did you learn today? Uh, probably need to put more work in. Need to learn the full piece. Ah! <laughs> ah! You're 17? Yes, sir. How long have you been playing? Uh, about five years. Five years. How long have you been working on this concerto? About two to three months three months and so let me ask you a question how are your grades in school good always okay so are you a, are you a reasonably intelligent young man yes sir yes sir yes, sir i can i can vouch for that so so what did you learn what did you learn about yourself today that i should learn the entire uh all the music that i have all three movements how long is the piece like 12 minutes 13 minutes yes sir so yes you like me i'm lazy and i will only do as much work as is required of me right yes, sir. so if you've been working on this piece for two or three months that's somewhere between eight and 12 weeks correct mm -hmm. now if i told you if I said, I'm going to give you $10,000, if you could memorize the first, second, and third movements and play them for me in six hours, $10,000 to spend as you wish. Your parents don't even know that you're getting it. Mm. Could you do it? I would try my best. <laughs> <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> so this is called practicing with intensity. Yes, sir. So you're 17, you want a job. You don't want a crappy job, you want a good job, right? Yes, sir. Cooper's job. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, because you know they're gonna get in some twisted, twisted wreck of a car crash in about 20 minutes and you're gonna, oh look, we've got a new good looking driver over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is what, I mean, and this is that, I mean that, now, so now let's talk about what you play. Oh, what did you, what did you learn from from what you played? I could add more shape to it. Okay, uh, you might need to slow the tempo down to make it a little more clean. Smarter than I am. So, um, did you tape yourself? Yes, sir. Good. Okay. So do you tape your lessons? No. no. I, I know it's not. Yeah, no. The hesitation means no. So as I tell my students, it's, I mean, you've got a great teacher. You've got a great teacher, but if you start grooming that habit of, of recording yourself mm -hmm. to a lesson, 10 bucks says your teacher says the same thing week after week. Take a big breath, don't rush, don't drag. I mean, as you play, right? Sometimes the notes just stop. Yes, sir. Right? So the fact is, is that when, when I'm playing,
listen to myself play that, I ask myself, does it sound good? And usually that my answer is, not really. Something sounds awkward. Something sounds rough. Something sounds not beautiful or not interesting, right? Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm really not very smart, and I have to keep seeing things really, really simple, right? So at that point, I'm like, okay, as I'm playing, um, Right? Am I playing those in time? Okay, let's start at the beginning. You play really, really well, right? And and of course, you got ready to start playing concerto. Do you have music on your stand? Uh, yes, sir. And did you have a chair? I do have a chair. I, I know that because you stood up. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not as dumb as I look. <laughs> okay. So, and you see now, the last, who was the, have you ever seen a horn concerto performed live? No, not live, but I've listened to a lot of recordings. Okay. Have you ever seen one on the YouTube? Yes, sir. <laughs> who was playing it? Uh, I've seen Bill Vermeulen's recital. Okay. Uh, I've what? seen, I saw Dave's live recital. Good. Did Mr. Cooper sit down? No, sir. No. Did he have music? No, sir. Ah. So at this point, then, then the question goes, is like, this is like another great saying that I didn't also didn't make up. If you want what we have, you do what we do. Mm. Okay. So now at this point, you're like, oh, okay. I mean, that guy that's in that job, that guy that's playing my job, right? This is the way he's doing it. This is the way she, Jen Montel. I'm, it's you know, we're all. It's 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 all. It's gender inclusive. Yeah, you like that? That that mis, that uh, yeah. That disclaimer. <laughs> that yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the fact is, is that as you start playing it now. You start saying to yourself, when you practice, you practice sitting down or standing up. Sitting down. Like, get off your ass. Stand up and be a yes, sir. Yeah. Woo! Yes, sir. Play again for me. Please. 17. You're almost ready to go to war. So you've been playing this piece for three months now, right? Two months, three months, correct? Yes, sir. Just nod, yeah. Okay, so what do you practice? Uh, I've done a lot of like slowing down work, speeding Good. it up. Pick a couple of spots that you practice slowly. Um, play them slow. Just practice for me. Pretend I'm not here. That's easy. <laughs> okay. So, and again, you know, your teacher is great. Uh, everyone that's everyone that you've had over the course of the last fourteen weeks, everyone has an opinion, and you know, and mine is, you know, mine is the fourteenth, and so it's obviously the one that's the least important, right? So what I'm saying is that you know, you're playing. Right? So I'm not really sure what it is that you're practicing. Right? You're practicing subdividing during long notes. Mm -hmm. I get that. That's terrific. Now, what I would suggest... Right? 
because when you played those groups of 16s, were they clean? No, sir. Ah, just like mine. Mine aren't clean either. <laughs> The bottom B flat is what pitch wise? Uh, sharp. Yeah, and sharp. Yeah. Uh, a little flat. Flat. Good. So we've got kind of an octave. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So at that point, we, we want we want like a real octave, not a kind of octave, right? Yes, okay. Sir. Let's go back to my. Let's go back to my sixteenths, and I want all tongued, and I want a. <laughs> Repeat it for me, please. Four times, without missing a note. Please. Slowly, slowly. Okay. So, sorry. And um, Argus, I love that name. How do you pronounce your last name? Uh, Vinci. Vinci, is is one of your one of your family members Greek? Uh, my dad is Danish. Oh, cool, Argus. I love that name. I wonder if it's too late to change my name. I'm gonna change my name to Argus. <laughs> <laughs> that. Okay, okay. So let me ask you a question. Was it clean? No, sir. So at this point, and your 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 fingers are kind of up high, and you're the one who messed up. Did you, are you the one that messed up your third finger? No. Oh, okay. okay. No. At this point, keep your fingers down. Because when you're playing, well, when you're playing something that's faster, you're going to need all the help you can get. Mm. So give me those and slowly. Each one twice. Please. Yes, sir. Okay, now do the same thing twice for each and and a little bit faster. Okay, good. So obviously, you know, it's, you know, I, I've, uh, you know, it's like Preston, right? It would be like if Preston was actually the age that we see on our screen and Preston were actually, I don't know, six months, it'd be like, oh, Preston's eating, you know, applesauce right okay preston's eating applesauce let's give him a piece of steak <laughs> let's watch him try to gum a piece of steak and preston will just choke to death right okay. <laughs> there we go right okay so the fact that that you know you've got to be able to it's all about consistency right so the, and the same with a right the same thing with those yes sir right good give me a little bit of um give me a little bit of uh development please and i want you what i want the, the reason i do this is that i want you to play i want you to think about the ends of the nose you're obviously a very you're a sensitive young man yes yes sir so you, I mean, your attention to detail is, are you in your room? Uh, yes, sir. I'm in my like guest house living room. Okay. So when, I mean, obviously did you, when you got your haircut for your mom, did you give her instructions on what to do? No, sir. Oh, she just does whatever she wants. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's never done this before. This is actually completely new. Oh, for real? Yeah. What do you think of it? 
I like it. I think it was. <laughs> I think we're all big thumbs up. Give him the. Give him the. Yeah, looks yeah. great, bro. Yeah, that. Hey, she cut, she cut Mark's hair too. Yeah, that. Yeah, she did. Notice the family resemblance. Oh, <laughs> like it. If I had hair, I'd give it. I'd 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 give him. Um, I'd do it too. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. See, we're all giving you thumbs ups. <laughs> so what I want you to do is, I mean, you know, you, we. It's like watching my kid make TikTok videos. She'll spend an enormous amount of time like trying to get every gesture exactly so. Mm-hmm. But when she plays the Brook Violin Concerto, it just sounds like ass, right? <laughs> there's, no, there's no transference. between. So play a little bit. Play a little bit of the development and listen to the ends of the notes. Make them beautiful. Make them interesting. Make them lovely. Yes, sir. Argus, the development is bum be da 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 da. Yeah, that's okay. this time than the first time felt more connected more flow uh, I, I don't I, I'm not I mean that's again that's too abstract I'm just not that smart when you're thinking about an orchestral committee what is the orchestral committee going to like tone no no I'm, the fact that you didn't miss those I mean that you missed fewer notes at the end you played the oh, yeah. yes that's is all that- the- <laughs> right I can be oh Listen to the flow. And meanwhile, the orchestra committee is like, yeah, that's great, but you're playing the wrong notes. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so at this point, then, you know, keep it simple. Keep it simple. And, and that, that, and you know, that. taking lessons on Zoom, WeChat, WhatsApp, FaceTime, it doesn't matter. But the great thing about them, like when you go to make a recording, is that all of those differences, all those subtleties that I think that I'm making, and it's like, oh, I'm literally reinventing the wheel. Mozart would, Mozart would just, he would stop breathing if he were here. No, it's just, it's, it's, robotic it's without expression i'm not doing anything right Mm. so all of those things that i think that i'm doing are not coming out right then what i need to do is say "Ooh, okay i need to exaggerate i need to do more i need to listen to the ends of my notes i mean So when you give me that last B flat, you gave me the last B flat and it was too short. Ah, bingo. That's it. See, mm. You're teaching yourself. Nobody yes, gets what I say. It's all about what argument, right? And if you're yes, listening sir. to yourself, then that's it. Then you're doing a great job as a teacher, right? 
Okay. Yes, sir. Um, uh, give me one orchestral excerpt. Mark, we got somebody else that's going to play for him, right? Yeah, we have a, a, a ninth grader who's going to play as well. Argus, Till, third horn, go. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. judgments and I, you know i'm not really sure right so as opposed to good and bad you be more specific and and be specific um well uh so when, we, when i got to the marcado part ba -ba 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 -da -ba 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 -bum, uh, i feel like i was starting to rush those okay. um my timing was a little bit off i think my hemiolos were Probably a little bit slow. Okay. So again, uh, you know, uh, you know, once again, proving that you're much smarter than I am. I'm on the committee, and unfortunately, what am I saying? Miss notes. Yeah. <laughs> Too many miss notes. Yep. And and more importantly, what's the most important? What's the most important observation that I'm going to make? What did you do that you may never do again? Uh, I. Played it. I, I restarted. Ah, that's it. Okay. So you're looking, you look across. I don't know how your screen is set up. I don't really give a shit. Right. But you look across. And as I look at, I see you playing for except present company accepted. I see you playing for an, an incredibly illustrious group of horn players. That's your audition, right? No idea this thing that you were going to play an audition for the principal horn symphony did you no nope. ah, there you got your fucking word that's it <laughs> you never know when you wake up in the morning you never know who's listening on the other side of your door yes sir and that's how you practice preach You're, and, oh ah, the make a first impression <laughs> ah, <laughs> as, as you go back and what do you think about the last you played? It was too. Uh, too, too short. Oh, look at that! And the thing is, you've got skills. You've got skills. You're just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> just like me. <laughs> okay, so <yeah. laughs> So as you go, now let's play. Okay. At that tempo, all tongue, please. One, yes, two, oh, I, I, it won't work. Okay, so let's now let's again let's put under the microscope just the part that we need. What do we need? Uh, okay, give me that, please. Slowly. The top F sharp is what? Flat or sharp? Uh, sharp. Flat. No, oh, yeah. Okay. 
I'm smiling. Why am I smiling? Because I don't know why you're stopping. Right. Is it, <laughs> have you played it correctly yet? No. No. No, play it again. And without missing anything. Yes, sir. why you're putting a little rest at the end that you're not really are you exhausted <laughs> mentally and emotionally <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> that's a great thing for me to practice right mm -hmm. so as opposed to playing <laughs> you see what i'm saying so again this is all about efficiency what are you practicing somewhere right so at that point now look okay let's try that but slower slower please My lady friend. What? My lady friend. Lady. That's Audrey. Oh, Ben. Oh, yay. Okay. Fabulous. <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> Everyone's got a date except for me. Okay. So that's okay. That's okay. I'm, I'll just fly solo. Okay. So the, so the, me too, man. Here, here, those stutter steps as you come you mean, you mean this or the woman? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it all works. So then you can start listening to pitch. And so when you, right? Now you can start thinking about that, those notes at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay? You play really, really well. Give me the first horn part at the beginning and then I'll let you go. Give me both calls, please. <sighs> Opening. Play the opening call. what are the what are the i mean the similarities i mean you know the fact is is that you know i do the same thing over and over i'm really in, i'm really consistent with all of my faults mm -hmm. okay so what did you do on the third horn part that you did here on the first horn part i messed up the the downward scale okay you missed notes yeah notes on the on the on the bar with six eighth notes Okay, good. What else did you do? Um, the bottom C was too? Too low. Oh, too short, too short. Ah, there we go. Good. So the fact is, is that, you know, you're like. You've got, you get good grades. Have you been arrested yet? Have a what? Have a what? Have you been arrested? <laughs> no, he has not been arrested. Thank goodness. <laughs> this is why I don't teach. 
<laughs> okay, so the fact is, who was Till Eulenspiegel? Prankster. A prankster. What happens in the end of the What happens in the end of the tone poem? In the end of the what? What ends the thing hap What happens to this prankster at the end of the at the end of the piece? He gets killed. Yeah. So I, I'm not a prankster. Is not really somebody who's like you know I'm using a joy mother or a whoopee cushion or I did some graffiti. I tagged a I tagged a you know a store and you know now they're gonna put me to death. Mm. Like, this is like there's some evil in this boy. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. If you don't have any, hang out with somebody who's got some, right? So that that kind of that sneer. <laughs> Right, so that you can really feel it bending. <laughs> right, so at that point, you can be like, ah! Right? Yes, and There's your Tanglewood Institute. That's it. Two weeks. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's next? Lock, Thank you, Mr. Ruff. Lottie. You're welcome, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, sir. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to play the exposition of Strauss Squad. Excellent. Let me ask oh. you a question. Yes, sir. How old are you, sir? I'm 15. Okay. So, ah, 15 is old enough to know the difference. So are you going to play the exposition of Strauss 1? Yes. No. Why not? Why not? I, I don't know. Ah, because the exposition occurs in Sonata Allegro form. Right. So there's no, I mean, today's the first day of the rest of your life. So uh, you, there's an exposition in a Mozart concerto, but in Strauss one, because it's not written in sonata allegro form, there's no exposition. Oh, You're going to- I never thought about that. This is my fault. I will, I will take my lashes for that. Oh, I, no, <laughs> nobody's, nobody's listening to me anyway. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> For a little bit, please. Thank you, sir. Thank 
Okay. Well done, sir. Bravo, Watts. Bravo, man. So uh, let's let's start. Oh, is that stunning? You guys are just you guys are just coming up into the mountains now, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, to die. Oh, stop and make a snowball for us. Hit each other in the face with snowballs. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, what are your comments? Let's start with what you have to say first. Well, I, I need to work more on playing through the whole thing because I was getting tired in the end. And it, it started sounding not, it didn't sound very good towards the end because I was tired. Okay. Okay. So, the, the comment that you just made is something that I say to myself all the time. I need to practice playing through the whole piece because I got tired toward the end and it didn't sound very good. It doesn't matter whether it's Strauss one and you're what, 15? Yeah. Or whether you're my age and you're playing Strauss one or Mahler three or whatever it is that I'm playing and I get tired at the end too. So that comment that you made is, is absolutely, um, it pertains to me as well. Okay. So, what else can you say? I agree with you completely. What else you got? Well, it needs to be more connected, the whole thing, with the air. It needs to connect it more. Okay. I don't understand that, but, uh, you know, that's, that, that's, you know, again, I'm not that smart. Let's start with the, let's start with first things first. You know, what are the, what are the, what are the biggest, um, what are your biggest issues moving forward? What are you, do you practice every day? Yes, sir. What do you want to do with the horn? I want to be as good as possible. I would. I wanted to play in an orchestra, but that scared my parents a lot. Well, you're 15, so you know. Uh, you know, at, at 15, I, I, you're not really. You're not on the threshold of having to make a career choice, right? You just keep practicing. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Um. Okay. So your your comment was that you want to be. You want to play as well as you can. Yes, sir. Practice every day? Yeah. Okay, good. So do you have music in front of you? Yes, sir. So how long have you been playing this piece? Two months. Okay. And so I assume you've only played, because you stopped there before the triplets, I assume you've only played that first that first. I've played a little bit then, but then it's not, it's not at the best level. That's okay. uh, I heard the end in your lesson the other day, so that's not true at all. You've been playing the whole first movement, bro. Okay. Okay, good. So, I mean, then you should get used to playing the whole first movement. But I understand that you, you know, you were only, you were only prepared to play the first part. Keep in mind that I want the whole concerto, right? Yes, sir. So do you need the music when you're practicing? Do you, when you practice, thank you for standing up. Yay! Do you usually sit down? So I do both. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I know what that means. <laughs> yeah, I stand up during the course of the day. Every time I have to like walk from the from the, from the couch into the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. You know, you guys are all such fucking horrible liars. <laughs> okay. So the fact is, is that you sit down, you put the music on the stand, and you play, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So how are your grades? They're all pretty good. Meaning what? Like higher than 95. Okay, good. So you're a smart young man, right? You should never, ever put that music up in front of yourself again, right? Start, yes. start pushing yourself. Okay. Tell me something about the piece. So, well, the, in the starting, it's very, it's a dramatic in the start, and then it moves sort of lyrical in the next phrase. Okay, good. What do you know about the piece other than the style? What do you know about Strauss, or how old was he when he wrote it, or what do you know about anything? And just talk about it. It doesn't have to be date, or, but you... No, I don't know very much about it, but I know... That's Strauss. He said his dad was a great horn player, so he started making much harder music than what they used to play. Okay. Okay, so his dad was a horn player. Was he? How old do you think Strauss was when he wrote this? That I'm not sure. He was young. In, 
in his 20s or something. Teens. He was in his teens. He wasn't 15. He was 18. 18, 19. Okay. So what does your dad do? My dad's the he does software and all of that. Okay. So imagine, imagine if, you know, I mean, if that were, I mean, imagine uh, software doesn't really work the same way, but imagine your dad, uh, imagine your dad's Bill Gates. <laughs> and you're like, why am I practicing horn if my dad is Bill Gates? <laughs> yes, right. Okay. So imagine... Your dad is Bill Gates, and you've decided that you know you have a you have a talent. You have a talent for writing, um, for creating software, um, new uh, new technology, and right. And you're I mean, what you want to do is you want to show your dad what you can do. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. So here's this kid who discovers that he's got this great. He's got this talent. He's 18, he's just a kid. You're just a kid, right? And he's really yes. excited. And his dad pra practices horn. God, every friggin' day, he hears his dad playing long tones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's like, oh, God, I hate the horn, right? But he's yeah. like, ah. I mean, and he's like, ah, this is really cool. Yes, I was. Okay, so as you get to this next spot. What can you tell me about it? Oh, this is probably need a double tongue in that area and it's fast and you need to slow it down to work on it. How about your performance of it? It wasn't the cleanest. <laughs> it wasn't the cleanest. <laughs> Let's let's simplify a little bit, shall we? Did you miss notes? Yes. Okay, there we go. Okay, it's like you're everyone's running for a fucking political office. <laughs> it wasn't the best. It wasn't the worst. <laughs> oh, it was. It was. It had good intention. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> oh man. So, so, so the fact that I threw it, you know, I have to say to myself, am I playing the right notes? Am I playing the right notes at the right time? That's job one, right? Okay. So when you start off at the beginning, I want you to, what do you do for, um, do you play sports? Yeah, I used to play basketball. Ah, uh, how tall are you? I can't tell on the, on the. I'm 5'9". Five 5'9". Nine. Five nine. Okay, so you played when you were, oh, 5'9". I, I played last year. Holy crap. You're 5'9 already? You're my size. You're already taller than I am. I'm like. Four foot one. one. <laughs> to be fair, I, I think he's taller than that. He's taller than me, and I'm 5'10", so. Wow. Okay, so let me ask you a question. What are you like on the basketball court? Did you play, did you play center? I played everything. Okay, so what do you like when I play basketball against you? Probably, like, aggressive. Okay, so what, I mean, you're like, I mean, my 11-year-old my -year, year daughter could beat you up. You're like, Bleh. Shots fired. <laughs> Come on! Uh! Right? I want you, and you know, so the thing is, is as you play. <laughs> Remember, you're on 
stage. You're all alone. The whole orchestra's just listening to you. Ah. Right? There, yeah. You know, did you ever, I mean, did you ever imagine like, you know, your NBA finals and you've got, yeah. it's like, you know, it's, it, there's 0.8 seconds left in the fourth quarter and you've got two free throws and there you are. Ah! You want it's the free throw, don't you? Right? Yeah. Ah, okay. Go for it. Try not to brick them. <laughs> Let her rip. Big sound, louder. Okay, it's this is what I practice. I practice, you know, it's like being a race car driver. I mean, Anybody can drive 120 miles an hour. <laughs> it's just a question whether I can drive 120 miles an hour and not crash, right? You can play loudly, but when you play louder, what happens? It starts to crack and miss notes. Exactly, exactly. So this is like, these are those basic skills. So now what I need to do is I need to practice. <laughs> now I need to practice playing loudly. Are you at home? Yes, sir. Good. Your parents, uh, where are you? Are you in, uh, are you yeah, in, I'm in my room. Good. I want them to say, oh my God, what's, what happened to him? He's playing so loud. He's, uh, I think something's wrong. I want you to really tank it and, and listen to the pitch. It's hard. Mine's not in tune either. Don't, don't, don't do what I'm doing. Do, okay. Try it again, and then we're going to continue. Please. Fabulous. Now, let me ask you about the last note. What was the pitch of the last note? Sharp or flat? In tune is not an option. <laughs> was it too hot? Too hot? Oh. No, I said it's sharp. Ah, good. Okay, I just didn't hear you. Good. You're exactly right. So. <laughs> right? So that's one of those things I'm going to practice. Now, I want you, what's the dynamic when you start here? When, when the next entrance? Uh, piano. Okay. Are you going to play piano? Well, I should, but I didn't last time. Let's say that you shouldn't. This is my opinion. This is subjective, right? Okay. Yes. Playing the right notes, playing them in tune, that's objective, right? My mm -hmm. suggestion is that you play a little bit louder because you're going to have an orchestra around you, right? Yeah. And to be playing, even if they're playing quietly, <laughs> serene. I want it to feel piano, but I mean, start getting worked up. Play the whole beginning, this whole section for me, please, sir. Okay. Big breath. Play louder. <sighs> Strap it on.
better than last time. I agree. I agree. So what did you do differently? I played a little louder. <laughs> That's it! That's it! That's all! That's it! You know, I mean, the fact is, is that when, I, when my students get nervous, when they go into an audition, the, the last thing that I tell them, you know, the last thing that goes through your mind before they say next <laughs> is to say, play a little bit louder. So that means, you know, when I come out and play, and none of the notes are speaking, I need to play. Right? In the same way that you did. Why? Because the pitch is better. The sound is better. I hear more line. I hear more shape. Right? Simple solutions to complex problems. Right? And you can talk Sir. air. You can talk about all that other bullshit. Whatever. If you play louder, you can't play louder without using more air. Period. It's, you know, it's like running faster by moving slower. It's not going to happen, right? So, yeah. so the, the fact is, is that as you play, now let's talk about. So, do you have siblings? Yes, I have a brother. How old? He's one year younger than me. Does he play an instrument? Yeah, he plays euphonium. Oh. He's playing right now, actually. Oh, excellent. excellent. He's what actually very good as well. He was first chair as a middle schooler in our region. Ah, excellent. Good. <laughs> Ponium is, is, is second in uselessness only to the horn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So what you need to do is you need to listen to some people that play with good intonation. And I can tell you that my intonation is awful, right? I'm, I'm, I'm happy about hitting the notes. I don't think about wh whether the notes are in tune. And every... Every remedial string player starts by learning how an octave sounds, how a third sounds. When they tune their strings, they tune them in what? Fifths, right? Yeah. So yeah. Hearing like. I hear what a fifth sounds like when it's in tune, right? So. Yeah. You're a good player. And the sooner that you start working on pitch, the more, I mean, the better your accuracy is going to get. Okay? So when you play, so, that D is really sharp. Sharp. And the. That's also sharp. Also good. There you go. Again, you're teaching yourself. You don't need me. All you need to do is be less nice. You just need to say, oh, you know what? You're not playing very well today. <laughs> and then you need to stop and you need to fix it. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So, and the fact is, is that as you play that, um, as you play the B flat, especially the second one, it was so much better because it wasn't flat, right? Yeah. Okay. Give me, um, play us. Okay. Oh, ah. You're going to give me, are you looking at the music? Yes, I can take it down. No, 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 no. Look where the bottom D, uh, we're going to go to the next section. See the fourth <laughs> note that you play? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. See that D? Yes, sir. Okay, and it's followed by how many 16th notes? Eight. Count them. Um. Six. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I can't count it. What's one plus six? <laughs> it's seven. Good. I want you to play a septuplet for me of those notes repeated slowly.
me ask you a question. Do you, uh, you're in your room. Do you have a wallet? Yeah, I do. Good. How much money you got in it? Ten dollars. Good. Let's bet ten bucks. Okay, ten bucks. Are you playing? Are you playing what I asked you or not? I don't think so. You don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Ah. Okay. What did I ask you for? Said us. Said said tough little the sixteen notes. It's slower. With the D and the six following sixteenth notes. Okay. So, are you giving me the last note? No. What, are you playing it? Were you yes. Playing? I was playing. Good. Do I want to hear it? No. Follow directions. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's the definition of a septuplet? I'm not sure exactly. Ah. What are, what's the definition of septuplets? So, it's not seven. So, I don't know why. Seven... Seven sixteenth notes. Seven equal things. It could be seven babies. Is it if you have six brothers, ranging in age from yours to thirty-five? Are you guys septuplets? No. No. It's that you're all born at the same time, right? Yeah. Okay. So I want. <laughs> Slow it down and let's play an F natural. Ah! Now we got it. Okay, close your eyes and. I try to play what it is that I give myself. I said I give myself a task, and then I try to play that task. I try to perform it, and then I listen to myself and I say, "Am I doing what I set out to do?" Right. So that. say to myself, okay, am I playing notes without rushing? I may decide to rush them later, but right now I need to play them in tempo. <clears throat> Give me a little bit because um, your professor was telling me how well you played the triplets. Give me, a, no, give me, a, give me one orchestral excerpt and then we'll, uh, and then we'll let you go. Do you have any, do you ever play? You ever play, any? I play so I could play a Brahms one. Good, perfect. I, you, you have, you have Brahms three from square F, right, Laksh? Yeah, and I'm just not sure if I have the entire thing uh, memorized. That's, that's okay. I think I can play it. If you if you don't have it memorized, put the music up. I will get it in a sec. Send the, 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 what's he doing? He's just sitting there on his butt. No, I'm just Okay, go. Hurry, run. <laughs> oh, there we go. He's not running far. No. No. Oh. oh. Laksha last year was a freshman and he went up to the high school and he got first chair in the top band as a freshman. Nice. Well done. Yeah. He showed those old kids what was up. That's it. Ah. I like hearing I like hearing high schoolers referred to as old kids. 
<laughs> and when you're 17 or 18 in Texas, you old. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly where that puts me. Okay, if you can't find it, don't worry about it. I'll just play it without it. But that yes! Was, that was it. You don't need the music, do you? I didn't realize that. Uh, this is the thing, the thing to practice without music. Because what ends up happening is I realize how lazy I am. And I don't need to look at Strauss after having played it for two months. I don't need to look at Strauss one, right? After having played it for six days. Right. Okay. You're a smart young man. Right? Okay. Now, you get the 10 bucks that we wagered earlier, if you could tell me what's the tempo of this mu uh, movement? Of Strauss or? No, of the Brahms that you just played. I don't know. Ah. Ah, okay, so this is, and again, these are the levels, it's like layers to an onion, okay? So you remember the notes, that's terrific. Now, what's the tempo marking? Right? What yes, is the meter? I think it just froze. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. What is the meter? What's the meter of the piece? I'm not sure. Is it is it four four? Is it two four? Oh, that... Is it is it six eight? Is it I think it's three four? I think it's three eight. Ooh. So now at that point, the, my question to you is, why did he write it in 3-8? Why not in 3-4? I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. Brahms is dead, right? <laughs> the fact is, is if he wrote it in 3-4, he would look a lot slower. And the fact is, is that the, 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 the tempo marking is poco allegretto, right? So yes. I practice it slowly, but I also need to think about as you're playing, see him because you're on music <laughs> <laughs> we see but it's a quintuplet and quintuplet means five equal five equal right so i need to practice right that's for me oh look i <laughs> go ben <laughs> i can do the other way too Oh no, I can't actually. I, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's try it again. Let's try it a little bit faster. And what I want you to do is I want, how many phrases do you think about there being in this? I think look, two. Where's the end of the first phrase? Right when it goes up to the C. Right. <laughs> There's the start of the next phrase. Okay, so there, there's a period before that? No, after that, I meant. Period? Yes. That's the end of the sentence? Well, I guess not. 
Not really. Where's the end of the sentence? <laughs> Right. So you've got a little, you've got a sentence with multiple independent sentences. <laughs> Ooh. Are you bilingual? Well, sort of. I could understand other languages, not really speak. What do you understand? What do you speak? <laughs> Hindi. Hindi. Right. Hindi. Right. So at this point, is it completely different from English? Yeah. Yes. You're a smart young man. Okay. So then what I want you to do is to say that I want you to really commit to this phrase. Okay? Try it one more time. Please. yourself well he's recording the whole thing <laughs> my 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 mom and dad my mom and dad are taping me my teacher's taping me. yes okay good so you go back and listen to it and you say yes i was better okay so now you you got you have one of these newfangled like little smartphones it has a voice at it has a voice record memo right yeah you can tape yourself and you can say okay am i getting better did you get better yeah, yes. it wasn't me. That's all you. Okay? Yes, That's sir. it. Thank you very much, sir, for playing. Wonderful Thanks. job. Locks, Argus, great job. Will everybody turn their cameras on so we can take a group pick? Yay! Yay. I want, I want everyone to notice something. What did he keep saying to Locks? You are smart. You are good. Trust yourself. Be your own teacher. This is the message, man. I mean, you couldn't have summed it up any better. No, the, Just, my message is work harder. <laughs> yes. But again, you are all vibrant, brilliant young people, and you're no more than you give yourself credit for. Trust yourself. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much for inviting me. I love you guys all. Ben, ah, oh, fabulous. <laughs> Mark, you're the best. You're the king. You, your students are so, so lucky. I really appreciate you having invited me. Mwah! I love you all. Great to see you, Eric. Yay! Okay, I'm out. All right. Thank you again. Let's talk soon. Wonderful. Wonderful. Locks, great job, buddy. Thank you. Great job. Yeah, there we go. Um, I actually have a lesson that I'm going to teach here in just a second. So Good I will job. see you guys uh, in the future. Look for communication about summer lessons. Uh, yeah. All right, see you. That's it. This one was epic. Yeah. yeah. I think it was empty. <laughs> Thank you.